Hello. Nice to meet you. I am a purveyor of rare and collectible American literature. Yes, we spoke about the collection that you wanted to see. Nice to meet you. You called about the Jacob Abbott collection, yes. Fantastic. A full collection that once belonged to President Abraham. Lincoln. Yes, his favorite authors. In fact, let me read you an expert, an excerpt of what Lincoln said. I want to thank you and your brother for the Abbott's series of histories. I have not education enough to appreciate the profound works of voluminous historians, and if I had, I have no time to read them, but your series of histories gives me, in brief compass, just that knowledge of past men and events which I need. I have read them with the greatest interest. To them I am indebted for about all the historical knowledge I have. Back in the early 1800s, mid 1800s, the Abbott brothers, Jacob and his brother, John, wrote the biographies of the world, taught in every school curriculum and in every library. Why don't I bring them out? We can look at them together. Before we get into looking at the books, I give you a pair of gloves so that our oil in our hands do not damage the books. Yes, I know your hands are probably quite clean, but. Just humor me. Here you are. I will glove up myself. begin. First, let me show you the collection. Then, take a couple, maybe do a bit of a deep dive. Of course, everything comes with a certificate of authenticity. These books were gifted to the president. CUA from a John Stevens Cabot Abbott was given as well. Eighteen fourteen. Let's get into it. The first one. History of William the Conqueror. As you can see, very old parchment. It's 
several hundreds of years old. But in wonderful condition. Let's set that down. The history of Richard the Second. History. Fabulous. BC. History of Xerxes the Great. History of my favorite historical figure. how they used to put photographs, pictures, illustrations in the books. Very cool. A history of Alexander the Great. Another great. Xerxes the Great. <laughs> Alexander the Great. Who is going to be the next great? that we find in this Queen Elizabeth Julius Caesar this one saw a little bit more wear I guess that uh, Lincoln must have been a fan oh and wouldn't you know start to sound like magicians, don't they?
because Darius the Great is here. It's a beautiful, just stunning to see this history. themselves or history. This one's falling apart a little bit more. No doubt. Well loved. Charles the Second. Richard the Third. Such a wonderful hard shell body. see a note in this one laid out in the year 1900 and a little bit more courage genius intellect Individuality. Good words. Good notes. Took a long time to put this collection back together again. See, some of these are written by John Stephen Cabot Abbott.
Genghis with the hand. Fernando Cortez. Maria. Madame Roland. Louis the Fourteenth. Is it King Philippe? Louis Philippe. Joseph Bonaparte. Let's double check on the number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. went to a couple different places, a couple different owners, but here they are, certified authentic by me. One.
why don't we crack open one of these? And let me show you exactly what the Abbott brothers shared with the world that made Lincoln so taken back by that. Let us explore Hannibal of Carthage. Carthage and Hannibal came from right here, an area of Upper Africa, Sicily, and of course, the Roman Empire in Italy, the big boot, <laughs> so to speak. was a Carthaginian general. He acquired his great distinction as a warrior by his desperate contests with the Romans. Rome and Carthage grew up together on opposite sides of the Mediterranean Sea for about a hundred years, they waged against each other most dreadful wars. Rome was successful in the end, and Carthage was entirely destroyed. There was no real cause for any disagreement between these two nations. It was a rivalry and spontaneous hate. They spoke a different language, they had a different origin, and they lived on the opposite sides of the same sea, so they hated and devoured each other. Jacob also notes that those who have seen other battles in the past we'll start to see a pattern, amazing, that hatred and war and death can have no cause whatsoever, other than jealousy. The Romans thought he was equivalent to a little child playing in the mud. And everything was fought very different. The weapons of warfare in those ancient days were entirely different. It was called a falarica, and it was a javelin consisting of a shaft of wood with a long point of iron. The point was three feet long, and it was to be thrown at the enemy from either hand of the soldier or by an engine. Back then, javelins and spears were much, much more devastating than a sword. Now, Hannibal 
was ruthless. Some may have heard that he traveled on elephants. Right there. A body of elephants formed part of the army. How to get these unwieldy animals across so broad and rapid a river was a question of no little difficulty. There are various accounts of the manner in which Hannibal accomplished this. One mode was that the keeper of the elephant selected one more spirited and passionate in disposition than the rest, and contrived to tease and torment him so as to make him angry. The elephant advanced towards his keeper with his trunk raised to take vengeance. The keeper fled, the elephant pursued, <laughs> and the other elephants of the herd followed, as is the habit of an animal on such occasions. The keeper ran into the water as if to elude his pursuer, while the elephant and a large part of the herd pressed on after him. The man swam into the channel, and the elephants, before they could check themselves, found that they were beyond their depth. Some swam, where they were easily secured, and others went down with the river, until last they went upon shallow ground, where they grained the shore, and the men downstream secured them. Can you imagine taking elephants across rivers? met his match, but not before taking out a great many Roman soldier. He eventually succumbed, as all individuals do, but remains one of the most impressive stories in all of history. Another conqueror, Genghis Khan. Shooting at Perseus, it says. First steps towards civilization and the Mongols. Oh, got that beautiful picture. The encampment of a patriarch. You see these big, what you would call in America, TP. In Mongolia, I call yurts and it's one big structure, and the rest is a big circle around it. We could put a fire and have the smoke come up. It was a very interesting style that is still utilized today.
She is very beautiful, but I cannot take her for my wife, for she is the wife of my son. I cannot marry the wife of my son. That's a good reason not to. Boy, did they have uh, interesting issues back then. The princess, having accomplished her revenge, marshaled her men, packed up her pretended presents, and returned in triumph home. Good for you, princess. Drinking the bitter water. Establishment of the Empire. Temujin. This is what people are used to thinking about Genghis Khan and the Mongols. When Temujin, at the head of his forces, arrived at the town of Kashin, he found that the fugitives whom he were pursuing were no longer there. However, he determined to take the town. He at once invested it and commenced the siege. The forces under Temujin's command were too strong for them, and the town was soon taken. Temujin ordered his soldiers to slay without mercy all who were found in arms against him within the walls, and the walls themselves, and all the other defenses of the place he caused to be leveled with the ground. He then issued his proclamation offering peace and pardon to the rest of the tribe, on condition they would take an oath of allegiance, and of course, they did. There was another great and powerful Khan named Idikud, whose tribe had hitherto been under the domination of Gurkhan the prince of Turkestan. A lot of cons. Who'd have thunk it? But none like Genghis. The conquest of China. After the death of Hujaku, the emperor of China endeavored to defend his dominions against Genghis Khan by means of his other generals. That did not work well for him. Genghis Khan had many friends. He had equipped his forces by means in a great measure of the plunder which he has obtained in China the year before. He went in. He plundered. And then he used China's treasure to fund the army to go back against China. A good strategy. Look at it. One last picture. governor 
on the terrace. ships used to look like. A boat with a small structure built on it to shield them from the arrows. If you couldn't shoot it, what could you do? Burn it, perhaps. in history. I hope you enjoyed looking at the collection of the Abbott Brothers biographies. Again, so cool that what well, once about history have now become history themselves. Just like you just like me. We might not end up the title of some biography, but as long as there are people out there to write down our names and our stories, we will never truly be gone. I hope Good rest of your day. Come back and see me anytime.